Hey, I'm so excited you are tuning in today. You don't want to miss this episode. Continuing on and answering viewer questions. Today I'm going to answer a really sticky one. Yes, it involves spiritual abuse and also involves the family unit and the marriage covenant. You don't want to miss it. Whether you're married or you're single, you need to tune in and watch this episode. I'm talking about who's your authority. Hey, come along with me. I'm Charlana Kelly, and this is Engage for Influence. The next three episodes, I'm going to focus on authority, spiritual authority, leadership authority, pastoral authority. Who is the authority in your life? I got a very challenging question that came in from a viewer a couple of months ago. And the specific question was, as a wife, she said, who is my authority, my husband, or my pastor? And I thought that is a great question because I have personally had situations in my life where I've witnessed pastors say, I'm telling you not to do that, or I'm not endorsing that, or I'm not sanctioning that, encouraging their congregant not to go in certain places or do certain things. And they were, every one of them, they were biblical. They were, they were other church services, conferences, things like that. And personally, I even went through a situation where a pastor that was in my life when my husband and I were planning to move here to Texas said, said that's not God and it's not going to go well. And thank God I didn't listen to that pastor and we followed what we believe that God was telling us to do and because we've had the most glorious and blessed season of our life so far right here where God planted us not only in Texas, but in the church, in the ministry, in the community where he has placed us. We have been extremely blessed to say the least. And I'm so grateful that we didn't follow the leading of someone who wasn't hearing God for us. So anyway, I, I just want to start out before we get into the scripture and just share a few things with you out of the wisdom of God that God has given to me over the years about who your spiritual authority is. We're not going to read it today, but if you want to go and read it, Numbers 30 goes through extreme detail to say that the husband is the authority of the wife and a father is the authority of a girl or a single woman. Now, of course, in those days, women always got married. It was very, very uncommon for a woman not to be betrothed because oftentimes the family was the one who chose the husband for the wife and for the daughter. And so, you know, these things were not common where we had single people still single up into their 50s and older like we do today in our current culture in the West, perhaps in the Eastern Hemisphere, perhaps those things are not as common as they are over here, but they are certainly common in the Western Hemisphere. So here is the thing, and this is the wisdom that I would want to give to you. Number one, the marriage covenant was established by God long before the hierarchy of the church was established. So that marriage covenant supersedes anything a church structure would try to set up today. I'm going to be bold and honest and speak the truth and love to you and say this. If you are involved in a ministry or a church where a pastor or staff pastors are exerting their control over you as as a married couple, 
as a husband, as a wife, as a man, as a woman, and they're saying that you have to listen to them above what God is speaking to your heart, then you could very possibly be in a situation where there is what's called spiritual abuse. And I would say in this last century, we saw a lot of that. We saw people place pastors above their their positional authority with their husband. And, and I've been a part of uh, churches for a long time. And I can tell you, I've, I have witnessed it work ruin in the life of people. And so I would say, run, run out the back door and don't ever go again. But you have to follow what God is telling you to do. And perhaps God's not saying to leave, maybe he's saying to pray. And I would say, pray, pray, pray for truth, pray for order, pray for alignment. God is a God of order. Even when he created everything in those six days, we see things being done in order. You have to have firmament before you can have water. You have to have sunlight before you can have foliage because as God set it up, the photosynthesis of the sun is what caused the plants to grow and the plants couldn't grow if they couldn't receive nourishment. If they couldn't, if they didn't have that rich soil, if they didn't have the water to come and they needed that sunshine to grow and produce the fruits and vegetables and food that God would have for us to partake of today. It's such a divinely beautiful way that God set everything in order. He created Adam before he created Eve. The most beautiful thing about that is that when he created Adam, he created him out of the dust. But when he said he needs a helper, he needs someone to come alongside him in this life. And he literally took out the rib of Adam. She, Eve was taken from his body. Can I tell you that over in Ephesians chapter five, we'll read a little bit of that today, but it says of the husband, he's held to a greater accountability than the wife, although they are equal in the spirit. The scripture says that Paul who wrote Ephesians also wrote the scripture that says we are all equal. There's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. We're all equal in God's sight. However, we have positions positional authority because we are the reflection of the father, the reflection of heaven. And, and so things are set up in that order to bring God great glory. But Eve was literally taken out of Adam's body, which means that if the husband does not treat the wife well, he actually destroys his own body and, and he hinders his own body because it goes on and talks about his prayers will be hindered if he does not love that wife and, and treat her well. The scripture says, do not treat your wife harshly. She's been sent to help. That's why I just believe women have an, an uber blessed position in the marriage covenant. So it grieves me tremendously <laughs> when I hear women exert their control and make their demands and all of that. I'm like, sister, don't you know? But they don't know. They just don't know. And Chuck and I have had to grow in this. My husband, the producer, I call him, we have to grow in this relationship as we have been together more than 30 years. But God sets things together in order. So Adam comes first and then Eve, and she's called his help me, literally Ezer Konegdo. She is the sustainer of life alongside of him. He is the head of his wife, but she is his crowning glory. If she can get a revelation of her position as help me to him, sustainer of life alongside, then she has uh, a, 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 a positional authority within the home to be his helper doesn't mean she's remaining silent. He's dictating and demanding and doing everything uh, in a way that, that hurts or wounds her, but together they come alongside. I always say this, I don't always agree with what my husband is doing, but I will share with him my thoughts and my feelings. And I always pray. I always pray and seek God concerning these matters. And I will share my thoughts and feelings with him. But if he makes a decision that he's going to go a certain way, you know what? I get in there and support him. And I have to be honest, the majority of the time he's been right. There have been bumps along the way that I thought, you know, if we'd gone this other way, it wouldn't have been like that. However, 
However, however, I never say that to him. I, I pray mostly for my husband to have wisdom. I pray mostly for him to have the mind of Christ and to be continuing in his walk with God so that he can be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I just get in there and support him. And I'm telling you, we've had a blessed life as a result. In the beginning, as we were learning these things, wasn't so much. Now, you need to know this regarding uh, church leadership, I'll call it. Now, the specific question was, is my pastor, my husband, my authority? Absolutely, your pastor is not your authority. Now, God set up the church in a certain way that there is a leader in the church, the pastor who has the mission and the vision of the good shepherd, the, our great shepherd, Jesus Christ. And he's supposed to take the mission that Jesus has given to us by example and in the order that has been set out in scripture. And he is supposed to implement that and watch over that as a shepherd and tend to the sheep. Now he's teaching and training you. Uh, he gives you opportunity and ministry. Uh, he, if you're serving in ministry, he may have appointed another leader to oversee that part of the ministry. So it's almost like the master and the slave. Now let me, before you get crazy with those two words, I'm only using them because scripture in first Peter, Peter wrote about slaves being subject to their masters which we could apply to your boss on your job, okay? It could be applied to uh, governmental officials. It can be applied even to teachers and in educational arenas. And it can also be applied in the church because that positional authority has been given to a leader to oversee that particular thing. So if we are volunteering in that area, we may not be being paid for it. If you're on staff, you might be being paid, but we are to be a blessing to lead. We are, are to grab hold of their vision and, and be a part of helping that to come to pass. Okay. So that's the arena that the pastor is in is particularly concerning the church and he has no right or she has no right or their leadership to come into the marriage uh, covenant unless there's counseling going on and he's still in counseling should never lord over that particular couple, he should, with great humility and great love, share the truth and pray with them and tell them the ways that they should go. But it's still up to that particular husband and wife to make the choice. Now, when it comes to a single woman, then her father is her authority as long as she is not married. So you could say that as a single woman is making decisions that she could get wisdom from her father. If he is not born again, then perhaps go to the pastor, but never put that pastor in a position nor tell him that he is your authority in your life. That is putting him in a wrong place and if there's any kind of, of uh, issue there, pride or you know, self-righteousness or, or arrogance or anything, if there's any kind of character quality not fully transformed at that time, it can put them in a position to stumble in your life as they take an authority in your life that God has not given to them. Amen. Now, I want to share just a, another example example of this, uh, Oral Roberts, amazing evangelist, great minister uh, throughout the 20th century. When God was calling him into a healing ministry, he had seven church leaders, men of great wisdom, counselors to him that were around him. Now he's told this story many times. He's in heaven now. If you've never heard of him, he's long gone uh, into his reward. Praise the father for it. And I thank God for him. This really kind of taught me the first time I heard it, it taught me some wisdom that I needed to know how to walk this life out and keep things in proper order and placement and therefore, you know, reap the blessing of doing that. But he 
said that when he shared with these seven men that God was calling him into a prayer ministry, six of those men said, do not do it. This is not God. You have not heard from God. And one man said, go for it. Do all that God has put in your heart to do. And if you know anything about his life, if you don't go read about him, he's an amazing example of God's servant. But uh, we see that through his life, there was a fantastic, miraculous healing ministry that God brought through him. Now think of it. If he had followed the six who said no and submitted under their authority, which was not godly, okay, not godly, obviously, then he would have never fulfilled that great part of what God had for him. Now, I believe that the father himself would have kept bringing that around until he said yes, because that's our good daddy. He wants us to fulfill all of his will for our life, but he followed the one. Imagine how hard that must have been for him. And I don't know all the details behind the scenes. I can only say what's happened to me. I have been in a place where relationships have been severed with pastors over the fact that I did not adhere to what they were telling me to adhere to. Now, I, I want to put that in context because when, when a leadership has come to me and shared with me that there were things in my life, maybe that I need to pray about or focus on or things like that, I pay attention to that. I pay attention to that, but no one hears God for me except me. I believe that the prophetic which is God's foretelling of things to come. And if you've been in the church setting for any length of time, and you've been around people who operate in the gifts of the spirit that God has given, you will come across people with a prophetic gift. But I learned a long time ago not to allow those things to come into my heart when they're spoken, but to kind of put them on a shelf and say to the Father uh, that if this be of you, then I am willing and, and uh, I will say yes to it when the door opens for me. What happens a lot of times in the prophetic is people go seeking after it and they end up in a wrong place. And I've seen that also work ruin in people's lives. So I'm not saying that, that pastors have no right to come to you and speak to you and try to help you and counsel you, but I'm saying that we should be prayerful if it's not an immediate witness by the Holy Spirit, that we ought to be prayerful. We're trying to serve God here and when that veil was ripped from top to bottom as Jesus died on that cross on our behalf, it opened up a way to all who would believe to go directly into the throne of grace in our time of need. We have full access to God and God speaks, God God directs and God empowers us. So oftentimes I think of the prophetic and I think of when people come to me to share with me that God has already spoken to me about it. And there is a great confirmation in the spirit that this is God. It's much like Elizabeth and Mary. When Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was already pregnant with John the Baptist, he was older than Jesus. She was already pregnant. Now Mary is coming and she's pregnant with the Messiah. She already, Elizabeth already knew about the Messiah. And so when Mary came to her, remember John the Baptist in her womb leapt in her womb and she had an encounter with the Holy Spirit in that moment. And she recognized that Mary was the chosen one carrying the Messiah and the promised one that would come. Why? Because God foretold what was going to happen to Elizabeth. She already knew about it. That, that is just such a great example of what I'm trying to say to you. So while pastors are in our life, 
to teach and train and lead us and we want them to do it and we we have submitted ourselves under them to be discipled and to be raised up into ministry i think any pastor worth his salt in the ministry is raising up leaders and sending them out if you're in a church that's not doing that then all you're doing is growing stagnant on the pew if you're not going out and fulfilling the ministry of reconciliation that you've been given according to second Corinthians 5, then you are just growing fat and sassy on that pew. And really and truly, you're complacent. You're dry, dead bones. There's no power in you. And I love what the evangelist Reinhard Bonnke said many years ago. He said, the power of God can deliver you from the deepest despair in the deepest pit, but it will never get you up out of your easy chair. Because when we grow complacent and lukewarm for God, when someone begins to share with us about the, the great commission and our call to fulfill it and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, then we roll our little windows up because we don't we are afraid and we don't want to do it. Stir yourself up. Stir yourself up this day. So pastors are given, uh, just like Paul wrote to the Ephesians, that they have been given these uh, evangelists and uh, teachers, <laughs> the fivefold ministry, apostles and prophets, evangelists and teachers. They've all been given to us for the edification of the body. They're there to teach and train us in the work of the ministry, but the work of the ministry goes on outside of the four walls of the ministry. I, I've watched pastors be very hesitant to let their people go on missions trips. One time I was told, I'm afraid for you to go because I think you won't come back. Well, why do people go on mission trips and then, and then kind of leave the church? It's to go fulfill ministry. John Osteen, a great teacher of the word, he himself said this, I'm not called to fill a church, I'm called to empty a church. Those are some of the most profound words of a pastor I've ever heard spoken, and I believe they were representative of the Father himself. God trusted that man with many, and I'm telling you, they they have over and over and over and over again send people out from their church. Now, John Osteen, like, like also Oral Roberts, is in his reward in heaven, but his ministry has continued and grown beyond anything that, that at least America could imagine. And so this is, this is the thing that we have to get today is that when you put a person in a wrong position in your life, especially in the marriage covenant or in the family, what happens is division comes in and destruction is often the, the end result of it. That marriage covenant has power. That marriage covenant has, has the ability, the three cord agreement is not easily broken. That's a husband and a wife in prayer. And that third cord is Holy Spirit who is at work in them and, and teaching and training them how to pray, how to operate together what to do and how to do it and so as we get in there and cooperate together with the Holy Spirit we can we can through our prayers turn the world upside down for Jesus but when a family goes out onto the mission field and 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 does the work of the ministry as a family there's great power in that as well so I really thank the viewer who sent me that question because there is a lot of spiritual abuse in the church and that's all around the world. Spiritual abuse happens when pastors and leadership ex overexert their positional authority and start doing things that they were not called to do as the good shepherd. There is absolutely no place in scripture that says that a pastor has that kind of authority over his church, his congregants, his people. And we see the result of pastors, quote unquote, religious figures who have continued on and not been corrected 
in their positional authority, it ends up in cultish like behavior, and then it ends up in mass suicide as Jim Jones's uh, flock, quote unquote, flock ended up all taking a cyanide pill and dying because of their commitment to a man. Where was their commitment to God? God is the ultimate authority and we are all under his authority and we've been given a helper and his name is the Holy Spirit. The latter epistles say that we have an anointing from the Holy One and we know all things. It also says that we don't have need of a teacher. The Holy Spirit's been given Given to us as a teacher. Now that may, that's talking about our daily lives. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth, teach and guide us. And, and so we should be developing that daily lifestyle of listening and obeying what God is instructing us to do. And then we gather at church to be equipped taught, trained, and discipled so that we can go and do the work of the ministry. Friend, I'm telling you, God's plans are good. His alignment and order brings peace and blessing. And we want to stay in order, especially in our homes, especially in our marriages and in our families. Oh goodness, I love you so much. I didn't even get into reading the Word today, but that's okay. If you want to read what the Word has to say, read Ephesians 5. And I want you to start at 15 and go all the way through. Uh, not 6, 9, chapter 6, verse 9. It says it all. It actually even says in verse 21 that we should submit ourselves one to another. You know, there is no reason for a man to abuse his wife and use a scripture that says you have to submit to me in everything. This is a beautiful relationship of giving and taking, submitting ourselves one to another, giving our bodies one to another to bring glory to God, to be the picture of the Father and of the body of Christ. As Jesus says here, as Paul writes here, that Jesus, it, it, the the husband is the head over the wife, just as Jesus is the head over the church. Jesus doesn't lord over people. Jesus is a good and gentle shepherd, and he tends to his flock with great care and love and is gentle. Even goes on in another part of scripture where it is written, the fathers should not provoke their children to anger. So men who are harsh and dominant and ruling over, they, they need a reality check with the truth and with the Father and the, and the Holy Spirit and I pray that they get it today. Oh friend, I love you so much. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, make Him Lord today. Repent of your sins. Ask Him to forgive you. Acknowledge Him as the Son of God. Thank Him He died on the cross for you. Invite Him into your heart to be your, the Lord of your life and then just be bold in asking for the fire of the Holy Spirit to empower you from on high so that you can fulfill the Great Commission. He loves you so much. Listen, I'd like to hear from you. Hey, send me some more questions. I'm loving this, answering these questions that viewers are sending in to me. Just go to my website, charlannakelly.org. Up in the top menu bar on the right-hand side is a little link. It says, Ask Charlana. Click on that, send me your comments, send me your questions. When you do that, I have a free resource. I'll get right out to you by email. It's an ebook that will help you along your way as you walk with the Lord. I love you so dearly. I thank you for tuning in today. Mark this day, mark this time, return next week and join me here as we continue in our study. Next week, I'm gonna talk about a believer's authority, your authority in the earth. You don't want to miss it. Until then, friend, God speed and God bless.